But yeah, so uh, if you recall the previous session on Monday, I was arriving to the point that we were talking about n-way caches. So this is a normal way to address caches. We have tags, we have index, we have block offset. So depending on the size of the, the word size or the number of blocks, we can find block offset pretty easy. And depending on the architecture of the cache, the cache if it's um, so let me just if it's uh, a direct map or cert n way associative. In this case, there are two and four, and a fully associative. In this case, there are eight. We're gonna have a lower number of sets. Thus, we're gonna have higher number of tags data. Okay, and that's the reason we call this n way set associative because each set now has n way to implement, right? When we have two-way set associative, we're gonna have two ways for each set, right? So that's why we have four sets, okay? All right, so. Question, assuming that we have a cache of 4096 blocks, right? And a four word block size. So each block has four words. And a 64 bit address, okay? The length of the address is 64 bit. You have a four, bit, uh, four word block size and 4096 blocks. Find a total number of sets and total number of tags, tag bits for caches. Uh, on different categories, direct map, two-way, four-way, okay? All right, so first of all, we have 64-bit, right? And there are four words, right? per block, right? And recall each of those were, so this is the address thing, do not confuse that. So each block is, is a four word per block, so you're gonna have two to the raise of four, which is 16, right, four, 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 bytes per block, right? Each word, these are each word. Remember it was 32 bits or four, right? Four bytes. So we have four word. It's gonna be two to the raise of four, which is 16. All right? So that's that's the first thing. Okay. Two to the raise of four, 16 bytes per block now we have. Right? So this will this will clear out the the first set of things we need to, to figure out, which was offset of the block, okay? So now this requires four bits out of those 64 bits, right? Remember here, so now we just figured out this part. Overall was 64 bit, by the number of blocks and the words per block, we figured out we need to have four bits for this. So now what remains is the, less, uh, is, is the rest of the 60 bits, right? Overall was 64, this is four, so this is 60. So overall was 64, okay? So now you have to figure out what are the tags and in indexes for each of those caches, all right? So for the direct map, Remember that the direct map has the same number of sets as blocks, right? So, we have 4096. How many bits do I need to represent those? I need to represent 
this number of blocks, right? It's a direct map. I have this number of blocks, which is equal to the set. How many bits I need to have? And remember, each bit is like a zero and one, right? So two values. How many bits does it require? Wait, I'm sorry, again, where does the log two come from? So that's the answer of this, actually. I'm just trying to translate what 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 was written there. Okay, just don't just forget about that. So I have four thousand ninety six blocks. I want to I want to make sure I can represent it with certain number of bits. Okay. It's a direct map cache. Recall it has the same number of sets as the blocks. So you need two raised to something is equal to 496. Right, exactly. Right? So I have 4096. I want to make sure that I can, you know, uh, distinguish them. So the easiest way would be because there are bits of 0 and 1, so you have two options. So a simple of log 2 will get to 12, right? 2 to the raise of 12 is going to get 4096. 2 to the raise of 10 is 1024. 2 to the raise of 11 is uh, 2048. So these are, if you know these, they are even, uh, they're handy, right? You don't even need the calculator. But in general, if you want to compute something, you just have to get a log 2 of this, right? Log 2 of 4096 4, is going to bring you to 12 bits. Now, So we've already figured this part, those four bits for offset, right? Overall was 64. Now we figured this 12 as well, right? Now what remains for the rest of the things are, so I have, this is 60. 60 minus 12. That's the rest of the, the bits I'm, need, I'm, I'm needing here. Multiply the number of times I have, which is 4096. Okay? 48 multiply 4096. So if I use a direct map cache, I'm going to need 197k tag bits. Okay? Yeah. Could you explain what's all this for again? So 12 is the number of bits I need to have in order to represent my 4096, okay? So remember 4096 in the question was a cache of 4096 blocks, right? So you are using a direct map. Direct map, remember it was... So I need, I have 4096 of those in a direct map, okay? And in, in a direct map, recall the block number Modulo block in the cache, so the number of sets are equal as the number of blocks because it's a direct map, right? So in order to understand how many bits I need for those 4096 blocks, I just have to make a log 2 of 4096. It's going to bring me up to 12 bits, right? We've already know that from the 64, I needed 4 more bits for representing uh, those four words, right? So you, you deduct whatever left of that 64, which was 60 minus 12, and then multiply that. So this is the overall size of the cache, 197k tag bits, okay? So the index is 12, and the tag is 48. Yeah. And can you show the question again where it mentions it's a direct map in the question? So the question asked using this info. Yeah, using this information, uh, mention the size for all of those. A direct map, a two-way, and a four-way. Okay? So, all good so far? So, is the, is the uh, offset always going to be four? On this question. On this question. Yeah, yeah. Because we had four, four word block size. Oh, okay. Right? So yeah. So, this might change. All right, so that was a direct map. Remember, when we start from a direct map to uh, an n-way set associative, by the number of set, by the number of n's we have, we need to reduce one from the uh, set, right? Because we are allocating, we are reducing the number of sets 
On the other side, we are increasing the number of positions of each data type. For instance, in this example, so starting from this, in this example, I had eight blocks, right? By going from a direct map or one way set associative, because you have only one way to 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 um, to just lay out your uh, tags and data, right? Per block, if you go to two, that effectively reduces your number of sets by a factor of two, right? So now your eight becomes four. On the other hand, your tag and data will become twice. So you need to reduce one bit from uh, the sets and increase it right to the other side. That's if you start from a direct map. You don't even need to calculate anything more, right? So now you've already calculated the number of bits for this 12 and, it, and the rest was four. So now if you go to a two-way set, it will reduce the block by a factor of two, right? You have more data and tags now. So a factor of two will, rep will be represented by one bit in the address. So instead of 4,096, I'm going to have now 2,048 bits, right? And thus the total number of tag bits is going to be 60, instead of 12, now it's going to be 11, right? And you divide, and you multiply that to, again, that 4,096. So now in this case, if you see now using a two-way set, I'm going to have 401 K bits. Does that make sense? Actually, I've written two times one bit. Yep. Just like what you see here. So that was a direct map or a one-way set. For a two-way set, the sets are effectively reduced by a factor of two, but on the other hand, your tag data becomes twice, right? On a four-way, four -way, you're going to have only two sets, but you have four tuples of tag and data. And, and that's actually the, the, the reason why we call them n-way set associative. Because remember, if, if you have like four-way set, each of those sets are having four ways to have data tags, data tags, right? Two-way set is like each of those sets, I, I have two different couples of tag data, tag data, right? And then eight-way eight set, you have one set of eight combinations, right? So what's the trade-off between like a one-way set and a 16? So remember, in, in, a, in a previous um, lecture, we were talking about uh, a sweet spot between a, f a direct map and a, and a fully associative. In general, people have found that when you go higher in associativity, normally you are able to reduce the uh, miss rates. On the other hand, you're going to have a, you need to have a more sophisticated hardware because the more you go with the associativity, you need to have more comparators here. So you need to spend more energy to compare these values. So this is an example for four-way, right? So there's a trade-off always. Does that make sense? So the higher, uh, so the eight-way has less uh, less than uh... on on average, yeah. So for instance, in this data they shown, so this is a a, a test benchmark. They call it a SPEC 2000. There are a number of benchmarks inside this. If you Google this, there's a website for that. You can download the benchmarks. And normally when you publish papers in high-performance computing conferences, normally one of the standard benchmarks are a SPEC 2000 or 2006. So you download the benchmarks and then run your algorithm and then capture the results. Okay? They run this on four different... Uh, they simulate the result with a 64... A kilobyte decache data cache, right? 16 word per block, and then that was their result in this study, for instance. So on an average, they had eight eight percent cache misses when we're using eight way, eight point three on four way, and then the rest you can see. Okay, so 
this is sort of an experimentation they, they did with uh, increasing the associativity on the cache. So let's go back to the example. Now we managed to compute the bits for direct map, a two-way set reduce the block by a factor of two. Now if you go for four four-way set, it's going to reduce it again by another factor of two. So from direct map it's going to be a factor of four. So you need to take two bits now to represent that factor of four. Your sets will effectively decrease by a factor of four. That's why 4096 becomes 1024. And thus total number out of that 60 that you computed calculated is going to be minus 10, right? 12 becomes 10 and then you multiply it by 4096. So if you use a four-way set, you're going to have 205 kilobits. Okay? And then finally, the last one would be the easiest because, questions? The last one would be the easiest because if you go for a fully set associative, there's only one set, right? With 4096 blocks, you just sort of vectorize it this way. And the tag is 60 bits. So you just have to multiply 60 to 4096, yeah? Um, is it 100 times 1024, 200 for the 4 <coughs> Say that again? Uh, it says 60 minus 10. That's 50, 50 times 4 is 200. But the next, but after that, it said 100. It said 200. Uh, yeah, that's right. That's a typo. So the final result would be the same though, right? Let me see. There's a typo here. So 50 multiply 4 multiply 1024. Yeah, the, the results are the same, but this is 200. Yeah, thanks for pointing that out. Okay. Any question? Yeah. Sorry, can you go over where, like, where you get 12, 11, 10 from? So, 12 was coming from a direct map cache, okay? So when you have 4096 blocks in a direct map, you remember uh, we are directly mapping them all in one location by just their tag, okay? So when we have 4096 blocks, that's going to be the same value as your sets because it's a direct map. The sets and blocks are the, the same concept. Because think about if a direct map as one set, one way set associative, right? You have only one, one set. So all the blocks are, are the sets, right? One set. So you have 4096 blocks. How many bits you need in order to represent those, right? You're asking your yeah, I'm just asking. Yeah. So each bit in a binary word, you have zero and one value, right? So you can represent two values with one bit. If you want to represent 4,096 values, how many bits you want? It's a it's a it's a log two of that, right? So you need you need 12 bits, starting from zero 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 to 12. It's going to be zero, and all of them one. It's going to be 4,096, right? So you can represent that range with those 12 bits. Yeah. So um, in the two-way set and four-way set, does the index bit remain the same? Or does it No, no, you take one and you add it to the other. Because overall must be the same. Overall is 64, right? We took out already four on top, but the rest of the 60s are going to be interchangeable, right? Fully set is you have only, uh, so let me just show it here. In this case, you had eight blocks, right? So eight way set associative is a fully set as associative. You have just one set, but all 
Tag data, tag data. It's just the other extreme of direct map. Right? In direct map, you have only one option. In, uh, in fully set, you have randomized. So you have all of those as an option. Right? So technically, it would be like 12 sets? Or sorry, it would be. It would be more than that because. So in this case, we had eight blocks. It would yeah. be eight set of tag data. But on the example, we have 4,096, right? So it's a 4,096. And the tag is 60 bit. So, right? This is an easy question. You can, you, can, you know, get points in final. I make sure I, I re, uh, review this another time with another question on Monday. All right. Because we had four thousand ninety six blocks, right? And the question said here that we have a four word block size, right? So a block is now four word for us. So one word, two word, three word, four word, right? Recall each word was 32 bits. So four bytes. So you have four, 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 and four. Or two to the raise of four, which is, right, 16. How many bits do I need to represent that 16? It's again four. Right. Yeah. In terms of tag bits, what are we looking for? What's it, like a higher number lower number? So this is just a system to represent the, the addresses, right, in memory hierarchy. So that's your 64-bit in total. So we have um, distinguished them in three segments, tag, index, and block offset. And depending on the architecture of the cache, if it's a direct map, if it's a fully n-way set associative, so these values are changing. Like, but the overall is the same, because it, this is the addressing of your ISA. This is your memory addressing, right? But the way we just interchange the in internal segments determines how we're going to address this, right? All right, so that was just for... Um, Could you go once again? Or how do you calculate the block offset? So we have 4,096 blocks, right? And a four-word block size. So each, word, each block has four words, right? So each word normally is 32 bits, which is four bytes. So four, four word is gonna be four of those fours, right? So it's gonna be 16. 16 bytes and you need four, four bits to address those. Okay, here. So it's gonna be 16 bytes per block. So four bits you need in order to address those 16 bytes per per block, right? All right. Um, so that was just for one level of cache, right? In, in practice, we have multiple levels of cache. In modern computers, we have at least three levels, L1, L2, and L3, and then you're going to have your memory. So the... And I mentioned that the closer you get to CPU, because of the um, latency of your bus, normally it's the fastest. And in order to make that search faster, normally the, the closest to the CPU is the uh, smallest cache. That's why it's a memory hierarchy, right? The top of the hierarchy is the smallest one. So this is close to your CPU. 
then you have your L1, then we'll have your L2 and L3, and then that's your memory. Right? And then you might have your disk, your hard drive. So this is like the, go the more you go down, it's going to be slower and slower while you are making it bigger and bigger. So there are, so and, and this determines how fast your algorithms are executing on computers. So the whole premise of high performance computing and parallel programming is to take advantage of your memory hierarchy in a way that you're not stuck here or here as few as, few as possible. Try a way to just solve your problems using the high level of cache, right? All right, so let's have an example if you have multiple level of cache. So the question is, now assume that we have only one level cache for this site. We have L1 only. So we ha we've got a CPU with a base CPI of 1, right? Everything is goes perfect. And the clock rate is 4 gigahertz, okay? So the miss rate per instruction is 2%. So on 2% of the instructions that we wanted to decode the address and find the data, we have miss uh, in, in L1 cache. So we have to go down to memory fetch the data, bring it back up, and then access that, right? So for 98% we have hit, for 2% we have misses. And whenever we miss on those 2%, this is the price we have to pay. Main memory access time will be 100 nanoseconds, okay? So assuming that, so this is your CPU, that was your L1, and that was your MEM, okay? 98% you go ask L1 and it's gonna be a hit you have the data back 98. on 2% this will require to get the data from memory right so on 2% of the time I need to pay the price of accessing a very slower memory which is 100 nanosecond so let's compute what's gonna be the miss penalty here so the miss penalty is that the, the access time of the lower memory, which is in this case my main memory, 100 nanoseconds, and the, the way I used to access previously in my cache, right, using my clock rate of the CPU. So this would be equal to, you have 100, divided by 1 over 4 gigahertz, right? 4 gigahertz, 1 over 4 gigahertz is going to be 25 nanosecond per clock cycle, right? And it's going to be what? 400 cycles. So the missed penalty I'm paying the price for those two percent are a lot, right? Every time I have a uh, cache miss and I have to go down to memory because of the uh, slower access time in my memory, I have to pay the price 400 cycle, okay? So if I want to compute my effective or total CPI with this scenario, it won't be one anymore, right? Because for two percent I'm paying the price 400 cycles. so simply by adding the base CPI, which was 1, and the new missed penalty multiply the cycle, right? 2% of the time I'm paying 400 cycles. And add these two together, this is 8, and you add 1 plus 8, it's going to be 9, okay? Does that make sense? It's 1 over 4 gigahertz. So when you have a clock rate of this, your nanosecond per cycle, per, per clock cycle is going to be the inverse of that, right? 1 divided by 40 yards. So it's 10 to the rate of 9, then you switch it. What is it? 
Multiply what? Axis times the for for effective CPI. For, so so this is this is actually so this is your effective CPI now the new CPI. So one was the previous one, and then you multiply number of cycles. You have to pay the price for the time for the frequency that you you're missing, right? Two percent of the time you have to pay the price of four hundred cycles, and then you add this to the previous. Asking if you could um, multiply 40 gigahertz by 100 milliseconds. No, this is um, so. This is the clock rate. Why do you have to multiply it? One, if you're taking the reciprocal of the clock rate, and then you're dividing. Uh, for you might have the same result, right? Yeah. Well, actually, this is this is uh, this is the same. Yeah, I mean, it's just your, yeah, yeah. It's the same. yeah. It's just you're just bringing this up, right? Yeah, that's the same. Yeah. Yeah. Either way is fine. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. So just to recap, clock rate times the memory access time equals the memory stall cycle per second. So say that again, and it's lower. <laughs> so clock rate times memory access time gives us what? Clock rate times memory access time. Yeah, we just discussed like so put those two multiply like, multiply together equals what? Like the mem stall cycle per second. Yes. We're talking about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so this. the four hundred. Yeah, 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 yeah. So this is this. So we are actually effectively. Computing this, CPI is equal to base plus this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Later tonight. Any questions on this side? So that's that's for the hypothetical case that we have only one cache, L1. So, and you see, when we have only one level of cash, at those 2% rate that we are missing things, we're going to pay a high price because our CPI started from 1, now became 9. Because every time we miss, we have to come back to memory and fetch the data back. So let's add another level of cash as L2 so that when we miss on the first level, we don't go to memory. We go to the second level, right? Second level cash has a lower uh, miss penalty than a memory. And we only go to memory at that point if we miss L2 as well. So if we miss L1 plus missing L2. So in this case, we have to have multiple levels of miss penalty defined, okay? So, now at this point, we're gonna add L2, okay? The access time for L2 is five nanosecond, much better than what we had for the uh, the the CPU which was 100 nanosecond, right? 20 times faster. Okay. And the global miss rate to main memory is going to be 0.5%, so even less than 1%. Okay. So now, in order to compute the primary miss rate, just like what we did previously, we're gonna we're gonna divide the 5 nanoseconds, which was the access time, by uh, the invert of our CPU clock, or just like your colleague mentioned, we're going to just multiply to uh, 4 gigahertz to this. So the miss penalty of having L2 is going to be only 20 cycles. Remembering if we had main memory only, it would be 400, right? So now every time we miss on those two percents, we don't go to memory, we go to L2 before memory, right? So now we are paying the price only 20 cycles. However, for those less than 1%, for half a, half a percent, we need to go to memory, right? So there is another pay 
there's another price to pay for that because we are having an L2 miss. Even L2 we didn't find it, so you have to go to memory now. And the penalty would be computed again. This is 100 cycle, uh, 100 nanosecond because this is the CPU uh, access time. And this is the um, less than, so this is a half, half, to per, half a percent, which is 0, 0, 0 0.005. And it's going to be 500 cycle. Okay. So now, if you want to compute the new CPI, previously it was just base CPI plus the stalls of the L1. Now we need to compute primary stall, which is ca causing by L1, and then the secondary one, which is causing by the times that L2 misses as well. Right. Okay. Base was already 1. For 2% of the time, we miss, we need to go to L2. Now, instead of paying the price of 400, which we had previously here, because we didn't have any L2, we had only CPU, by adding L2, we reduce this 400 to 20. And this is for the case that L L1 misses, we go to L2. For the case that L2 misses, half a percent, multiply 400 cycles, right? So we're going to add them both up. It's going to be 3.4. Remember, we had 9 in the previous example with one level cache. Now we have 3.4 in the in a newer architecture. So the speed up we gain by adding the second level cache is going to be 2.6. Uh, okay? I don't understand where the 400 comes from. Is it from the previous slide? Yeah, yeah. So this is the complement. This is the second section of the previous example. Yeah. Did you get the idea? So in high level, let me just see if I can find a find a new slide to write. So previously, what you had was this. You had CPU, you had L1, and that was your mem. Right? Your CPU is working at 4 gigahertz. 2% of the time, you miss. You go to memory, right? So your CPI was 1, you have to pay the price of the 2% of 400 cycles caused by accessing your memory. And that was 9 CPI. But now, in a second point, you have the same CPU, you have the same L1. Now we've added L2, now bef and then we have memory. So memory is like larger, I'm just going to mention a portion of it. right? 2% of the time, instead of going to memory, now we are going to L2. L2 itself is bigger, so the majority of time is going to be hit, but half a percent, L2 also misses. Now we're going to go to memory. Okay. Now adding this 2 level reduces our 9 to 3 point, um, yeah, 3.4, right. 3.4. And dividing these two, you're going to find that you have 2.6 speed up. Okay? Does that make sense? And since this 5, less than a, less than a percent, half a percent, is only for L2, sometimes we call it local miss, right? Or L2 miss. This is not a global miss. Now, what's going to be my global miss now? In, so in the first part, my global I had only one level, right? My miss was global. It didn't, it didn't have local and global. It was 2%. Now what's going to be my global miss now? So it's half percent for L2. Yeah. Yeah. 
if, if, if you want to compute the CPI for that global miss, because it's going to affect, each miss will affect your CPI. I understood your point, yeah. Uh, let's have the definition of that global miss for the cases that both of them misses. So for those 2%, that percent L1, that's right, yeah, yeah. So this is another way to compute CPI. If you didn't want to compute individually, find a global miss, and then, so that's why always there are two ways to compute that. Yeah. We have another example on Monday, so um, you get used to this type of questions. Sorry, sir. So what's the global miss? So for the two percents that you miss on the first one, multiply the half a percent that you miss both. So one percent for the global miss. Yeah. But for the global miss, you have to take into account 500 cycles now. The, the miss that you pay for uh, missing from L2, right? So that's the alternative way to compute. Anyways, you're going to come up with 3.4. Both ways. Yeah, yeah, both ways are the same. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If you if you take a look at your reference book, so you have both of the answers, the same. Okay. What is it? You multiply the miss rate for L1 to L2 and miss rate for L2 to the mean for the global miss. That's what we do. If, if you want to compute it the other way around? Yeah, yeah. So you, you need to compute the, the times that you are accessing your CPU uh, memory, right? Coming down directly. So 2% of the time you were coming to L2, out of those 2%, those half a percent uh, you were going to the memory, right? So like that 2% becomes 100% for L2. Out of those 100%, half a percent of that misses you are going to memory. So that's why it's in two level. If that makes you confused, uh, just use this one, it's much easier, right? Okay. You, just mo you just add the first one, the primary install and the second install, right? That's even more intuitive. Okay. Um, all right. Yep. Well. Why the yellow term is uh, 0.005? It shouldn't be 2% uh, in logic. No, because, so, yeah, so 2% percent of the time we miss going to L1, right? And then we go to L2, okay? But half a percent of those time. So, so the, the half percent is when you consider the case you already missed in L1. No, this is this is a global miss rate to memory. So half a, half a, half a percent of the time, in total, okay. yeah. Total. That's why we call it global. Okay. So remember, you mentioned that you're going to go to memory. So that's that's for that. Okay. So it's actually twenty-five percent in uh, L two. Twenty-five. Twenty-five percent of missing rate for L two to go to the main memory, right? Oh, you want to compute it the other way around? How did you come up with 25? Yeah, 2 divided by 0. So 2 Oh, 25% of the time is you miss L1 and L2, right? Uh, just miss L1. Miss L1 and L2 can be global miss rate, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, so just the, the miss rate for the L2 is 25, right? Percent? Percent, yeah. Uh, I can't compute it right away. Doesn't make sense to me. Why do you want to make it so complex every time? I just forget about the alternative method. <laughs> this is much easier. There is, um, you just have to think about the way that you miss the first level. Instead of going to memory, you go to L2. And then if you miss L2 as well, you have to go to memory. Okay? That's all. And this 400 is the um, access time for here, which is the miss penalty on the other case. OK. So um, primary cache, or normally L1, is smaller, closer to CPU, 
it focuses on minimal heat time, right? You want to make the heat time as fast as possible. L2 cache is going to focus on low miss rate to avoid main memory access. We want to make it a little bit bigger so that at the last resort, we don't go to memory. Heat time has less overall impact, right? And that's why we see that the heat time, it was 20 cycle, but for the L1 was, uh, where was that? Oh, we didn't compute it for the L1. So normally L2 is, is a, a number of factors slower than L2. Let me just get rid of this slide in the middle. Okay. And the results would be you have L1 cache usually smaller than single cache, right? And an L1 block size is smaller than L2 block size. Okay. And I would say the rest of the the rest of the chapter five focuses on some advanced techniques on software optimization via blocking. So how how you're going to use your cache blocks and access a matrix multiplication, for instance, block by block instead of uh, you know each each element by element. So if you go block by block by the size of your cache. You're going to use memory locality, so you're going to have a speed up. So this is a very good thing to read if you're interested in parallel programming and high performance computing. And so by a simple cache block to access those elements block by block for your general matrix multiplication, which is we call it gem, you're going to have a huge improvement, right? Starting from here and optimize, you're going to go to 1.7, depending on the way you block it. So if 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 we vectorize this and if we use perhaps uh, yeah, so we define a block size and then you vectorize it for Intel machines. Perhaps you can uh, use some uh, intrinsic, right? So it's kind of depending on the size of the vector in each architecture, you can have vectorized matrix multiplication, right? It's in registry. Um, yeah, just have a look at that. There are some codes also in the in the reference book. It's, it's interesting to see. This simple general matrix multiplication is the foundation of many algorithms, specifically in machine learning. Yeah. This this no, it's not going to be in your exam. Yeah. All right. Um, and then we, we leave the rest of the uh, the Hamming uh, encoding and virtual machines. And there were some stuff about page and address translation. We're not going to have time for that. So I'm just going to leave those out. So on Monday, we're going to have a review of the chapter 5 and 4 and some sample questions. Okay? Any questions? I'll, I'll make sure I'll put this slide tonight. So the majority of going to be on 4 and 5? Uh, yeah, I would say so. Yeah. Can you upload uh, in the sample final phrases? Yeah, sure. Yeah.